since using a film is part of a creative process, the steps you take reflect your own creative ability. We hardly need to be reminded that we live in a world that is becoming more complicated and more crammed with information every day. One description for this vast quantity of data uses that overworked word, explosion an information explosion. First there was the world, and no image of that world. It was quiet for hundreds and thousands of years. Then all your grandfathers and great-grandmothers, they arrived in the world and felt they should describe it. We are here, they said, and this is where we are. They could see, of course, but they taught themselves to see again. To reassemble the world. To resemble it with their hands. First I was myself, then I was an image of myself. Still the world moved so slowly for them for so many years. They measured it in days and nights. They made one thing at a time. They saw one thing at a time. They had set out to learn about the world, and they felt they should discuss it. When confronted with a specific need, they would call on these memory banks for information, which they would run through, sort out, and relate to the problem at hand. These men could speculate and could predict. They were artists. They spoke words to each other and sang, and invented languages. Sometimes their words were words, and sometimes their words were images. And still, all the efforts they made came only through the power of their own hands. Yesterday, in the history of mankind, has man made any significant advance in his control over his earthly environment? And when it was not enough to trust their own hands to remake it, they sought to capture the world. They built boxes to capture light and imprint it on another surface. They looked at the world at a distance, through a lens, and made meaning out of shadows. 
what is here and what is elsewhere. The most pleasing way of seeing an object is from an angle. And when we see two or more sides, we get a feeling of depth. They were fascinated, and the images kept coming, accumulating, faster and faster, until they ran together, and there was motion where there had been stillness. The gears turned again, and the shadows appeared to live. First I was myself. Then I was an image of myself. There is no more motion in any one of these drawings than on a postage stamp. But on each one, the action is slightly advanced. If the series is split fast enough, the picture seems to move. You can demonstrate this with a card. On one side, a bird. On the other, a cage. Twirl the card and the bird appears to be inside the cage because your eye holds each image briefly after it has gone. In the historic scene shown here appears the inventor of the first talking motion picture, Thomas A. Edison, beating some of his fellow pioneers in the march of the movies. In homes all over the land, the smaller movie cameras and projectors give happiness to the entire family. Photographic quality was judged by eye. They were fascinated, and the images kept coming, accumulating. They translated everything through lenses, boxes, and machines. Even the sounds from the air became impressions, reproduced, transmitted, received. As I speak, the sound waves produced by my voice are transmitted through the air to the microphone where these sound waves are converted to changes in an electric current. My words that have been recorded on the soundtrack appear like this as I am now speaking to you from the screen. Many of you perhaps never realize that voice and sound can actually be seen.
is information. The proper use of it can bring a new dignity to mankind. Properly related, it can maintain a balance. It's destination unlimited. Magic power soaring through space to link man with man. Brilliant power lighting the way to a better world. We succeeded in extending human sight far beyond the horizon. New eyes, new vision for the world. A man could sit at home, yet his eyes could scan the countryside. A bright new era dawning, a new dimension in communications. Distance reduced to microwaves. Walls, barriers, mountains erased. Television, the ultimate triumph in man's search for sight beyond the range of the human eye. 1940, the nerve-tingling drama of a national political convention. The first ever televised. Philadelphia and New York were knit together by the electronic miracle of television. Then the shadows disappeared and there was only light. Pure electrical impulses on a surface of light. They segmented the world and reconstructed it a thousand times over. The world was uprooted, was broadcast, was elsewhere. I was a transmission on the surface of light. traveled a long way for an illusion. The last stop, home. Then the shadows disappeared and there was only light. Pure electrical impulses on a surface of light. They segmented the world and reconstructed it a thousand times over. The world was uprooted was broadcast, was elsewhere. I was a transmission on the surface of light. Transmission uprooted the image. The image was rootless, untouchable, was elsewhere. The transmission came in a stream, then two and ten and a thousand streams. They received and received until they were filled with the image of elsewhere. offspring of a marriage between a television tube and a radar screen, display scopes do not show physical images transmitted from elsewhere. 
They display the results of the computer's findings. Meanwhile, all your ancestors busied themselves with machines. Machines to order the world, to contain, sort, and analyze it. Which records go where? When? In what quantities? The cards tell you. We start in production control. Here, every lacquer master is assigned a shadow, a special business machine card. From now on, this card can lead you straight to our particular recording, no matter where it might be in processing. What they had learned about the world was spilling over all around them, and they needed machines to order the world, to contain, sort, and analyze it. With grooves, with magnets, with holes punched in paper, the machines wrote the story of the world in a code your ancestors could see and touch. What they could not know when they began is that their machines would not only describe the world, but remake it. We make for ourselves internal pictures or symbols of external objects. And we make them of such a kind that the necessary consequences in thought of the internal pictures are always pictures of the necessary consequences in nature of the objects symbolized. Our machines delivered us a world in transmissions, then in code which never stopped. And the streams now came by the millions, so many they could no longer be received. So we simply stood in the rush and let them flow around us. We were nodes in the network. We were stones in a river going elsewhere. there is one thing we are all interested in, it is our future. More than anything else, we want to know how we are going to get on. As the water rose around us, the world that was, was not enough and we aspired to leave it behind. In the machine, we felt free to perfect the world. First I was myself, then I was an image of myself. And as the ether rose around us, the things we could imagine became more real than the things we could touch. First I was myself, then I was an image of myself, then I moved on the surface of light, then I was a transmission, 
Now I am a code. We were here, but always we aspired to be elsewhere. Until elsewhere finally replaced here. We immersed ourselves in ether and began to say our goodbyes. Goodbye machines. Goodbye moving parts. Goodbye analog. Goodbye wavelengths. Goodbye particles and pulses. Goodbye 20th century. We are making our exit and we are leaving a note. A graffiti. We were here. Thank you.